Um, she writes and teaches here in Baltimore. She holds an MFA from the Writing Seminars at Hopkins and a PhD in English from Emory. Her poetry and prose have appeared or are forthcoming in both the Three Penny Review, Queen Mob's Tea House, and elsewhere. So join me in welcoming Marla Starr. for coming out on this very brisk Sunday. Uh, I'm from the desert and I, I can't deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah, th thanks so much to David and Stefan and Claire for inviting me to read and James, it's so great to be read and uh, all the other readers that I'm just blown away. Um, so this first one I'm going to read is called Tennis. I had lived for some time in a foreign country without my knowing. When I returned, I'd forgotten how to use my voice, a tinny suspect thing. Someone had left the faucet running. Someone drained all but a crystal ring. I trailed a finger along its salt pinked to the four walls and furniture. There was at least one ghost of my father, thinner than memory, in ritual trance weaving Morton streams through our rental home. The ragged bunch of us followed his frantic pacing. He blessed every room, cradling the yellow-skirted girl safe in her dark cylinder, orbed against rain. My face flattened to the rug. I taste the briny grains planted once to protect us from harm. West Monument. And still a cathedral cowsy. Lime slicks its mica glaze across what history has cobbled over. Twitching raven, idle predator. I am tangled in the leashes of the clocks. I age, an egg carton streaking yellow. Small as a stitch, I scale the dead century stone, its blocks beaded with weather weeping all our breathing. The lesson you already know is not that progress dwarfs us. Its measure is also the machine. Searching for a hold, I grip the ledge with my tongue and teeth. Tomorrow stops its creep. A dozen cracked shells. Um, this, this next one's entitled, um, it's, it's for my mom. The hours gather and suspend like open pages, bare-faced without telling. All the doors swinging heavy in clinical blue. Her house keys pinched to her chest. She breathes through what can't be breathed through. The clauses that link us make poor containers for fact. Her purpled tongue darts. A word repeated keeps it silence. A silence outside of touch, a body beyond relation. Um, so the, the next few I'm going to read are um, from my my book manuscript, um, and uh, the the project is uh, kind of a, a documentary look at the uh, religious sect I grew, grew up in. Uh, I grew up in the Moonies, uh, which was a, a religious group uh, that came to America kind of in the 60s and 70s. Uh, founded by, by Sun Myung Moon. Um, so it's kind of a uh, cultural history of the sect and also kind of looking at my own family and, and personal memories. Uh, just a quick heads up, uh, the next few poems, there's some, some allusions to sexual assault. Uh, so if you need to step out or, or tune out, I uh, just wanted to give you some forewarning. Uh, Reverend Moon comes to Las Vegas. I broke a three-day fast with cold pumpkin pie and whipped cream one minute after midnight. Jay sneered I'd get the shits, but I was smug, parading my penance as I forked crumbs from the grocery store tin. I hoped to have my sin by January. I swore I'd see my old self sink like a heap of coins to lime in a wishing well. At pre on four, I slumped in the motel corridor, scrabbling back to my room when a strange man appeared lunging down the hall. Show me your God, I'll show you mine. 
He loves money, but says a stuffed belly hurts worse than a hungry one. If you're lucky, he'll pass you in the buffet line and slip you a crisp 50 over his mound of king crab. Once I overheard him praise a young girl's lips. Ripe, he said, like two peach halves. You see, a prophet must also be a poet. His poetry must be easy to understand. At the Gambler's Anonymous meeting, I'd never felt shinier. I was just the driver, not infected with the beast myself. But then word got out. Even as High Holiness had been all day at the slots, his latest miracle, spinning our hard-earned bucks back into air. I can show you the math, it's easy. Our subtraction is addition, so when a man gropes me at the bar where I'm hawking bouquets, it's only me and Eve to blame. Between us girls, the only sole difference is time, plus 6,000 years, and she'd be another teen Sunday school teacher sobbing in the parking lot. After all, Jay was right. But still, steak and eggs for two dollars must mean this place is paradise. We bowed our heads over the meal, the table tarred with cigarette smoke, and we told the joke about the men hired to crack converts by making them sleep deprived. Our favorite pastime, we laughed and rocked in our seats to break the tractor beam of fatigue, pulling us down to our plates. Only the desert wanderer knows the sweetness of water. But friends, I'd had better first bites. The flesh was glue than ash in my mouth. Um, so th this next poem is an Abbasidarian. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, each line of the poem starts with subsequent letters of the alphabet, so A, B, C, D. Um, so I'll see if you can, it's easier to see on the page, but if you can, you can hear it. Uh, this is called Abbasidarian for Revisionist History. Alone in the seafood factory, the women bend over fresh catch of bodies, all night dividing slabs, they go numb to the sound, electric buzz, stutter of fluorescence, and creeping fish handler's disease, swelling around finger bones. Guts and gray slick, a thousand open beaks, they hammer at heads, iridescent scales, shimmering particles fly, the growing pile of jettisoned bones. Why does it feel so much like killing when these carps, all ice and rigor mortis, are long dead? Heaps on the conveyor belts tell a different story. Make fortune shape, she says. Not unlike tea leaves, a providence that will justify their offering. Threadbare converts, young mothers and virgins, have been promised that nights of labor will quantify some measure in heaven. Returning glory to the sinking, if they work until tomorrow's light. Breathing shallow, the odor ubiquitous, utterly thick in mouths and hair, and yet how very small a sacrifice for so grand an empire. News comes to the walls fall, and the sea king credits it all to his fishmates. Their X number of days narrow to a moment. Now ever young kingdom come, the path to Zion paved with tuna and eel. Um, just a note about this one. I, I wrote it a, a couple years ago when I started this project. Um, but there was actually a story in New York Times Magazine last week. Uh, it was in the, the um, New York Times Daily podcast today. Uh, but it was a whole expose of uh, like, the untold history of sushi. So Moonies are actually running <laughs> sushi in America. Uh, so that's, that's what that poem was about. <laughs> Uh, but I, it's a really good article. I encourage you to check it out. Um, got a couple more here. Uh, the next one's called Master Reel. She remembers the projectors whirring, granular black and white, the endless flicker of the aged bride preparing for her master's arrival. Every grain of rice washed once, twice, seven times polished to nothingness. In the milk-white clouds, her face obscured, where the old woman sees her master's face sloughed with tears. Slow to real time, the real turns to montage. The bones of her skirt gathered in her fists, daughter-shaped and dutiful in the door of the bus. The torrenting rain, a wall, a still of rain, her depth of field flattened, 
The bride swarm, white flocks tossed in the downpour. The bride an allegory of a bride, particular and plural, singular and multiple. White bells chasing each other across the corridor, one doubling back to catch a dropped veil, returning to the stream. In the master's cell, the barefoot prisoner steal rice from a dead soldier's mouth. The master gives away half his rations. The aged bride hands and shears, or the aged bride binds and shears her hair to knit socks for his blackened feet. The reel shudders, worms dance across the white screen, disappear. On the bus, the young bride cannot see the bridegroom's face. Water drips through her hair, through metal pins tight against her scalp. She feels the bride's gather behind her in the dark, or in the door, and closes her eyes to join the swarm. The next one's called Phosphorus. Uh, it'll warm us up a little bit. In the garden, we smash pomegranates by the algae pool to smell the pink sizzle of juice against hot concrete. The scuttle of winged beetles wrestled from the tree, the soft crack, spilling of seeds, pockets of red chewed wooden in our mouths. I can't keep track of my body's mutations. A white t-shirt past my knees, crouching to draw goat's head thorns from my heels so thick they no longer bleed. We go to church in plastic lawn chairs set in rows, a dark room in the white heat of summer. Hymns sung off key, a fat black fly against the glass keeps our time. The offering basket in mom's top drawer nestles with un unworn earrings and stopped watches, the green taste of metal when she takes a handful of dollars. I learned to do my own dentistry, baby teeth rattling in a Russell Stover's box. A thwack of string against a stubborn jaw. Half her face drooped with palsy, sweat dripping into one eye. The twitching nerve in her left cheek is the same in mine when I hear the yard dogs bucking at their chains. Silver striations across the pelvis track growth like rings on a tree. Cicatrix of the itching wound, at once dead, still living. This, this is my last poem. Um, this, this tells a box. My problem is rarely breathlessness. Coiled between syllables, I measure the distance one might run from pole to pole without being seen. The only rule one needn't take to heart. Proximity to threat is one sort of safety. An arrow spins wildly around its ordinals where the swelling silence unbrackets memory. Like the boy in the pit who pried apart my lips, his sandbox fingernail raked hard across my gums. I'm trying to break open. I told no one I'm telling you. Thank you.